realized that I, honestly during the spawn dragging that uh, as like a bluegill color if you take that the regular uh, green pumpkin and you like chartreuse dip the chest you know there's already that color yeah the, but it's like a green though. it looks like a uh, that almost looks like the damn uh, uh, bay bass color yeah you know, yeah it does it's like gold green but I don't know if you know but uh, in, at least in salt water the most visible color down deep is that chartreuse green makes sense uh, I've always it's done just, well on it wherever the co however the color spectrum works it's one of the most visible deeper low light conditions so nice yeah. so give me the rundown man uh, you, you took my box with you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, I, I mean, so I can the, see what's the, low, so... So uh, I literally set up a, a, a Ned, a Nico, uh, the Carolina, but I did the finesse one. I went up to a 3 8 ounce sinker. That pencil sinker, that long, skinny, oh, deleted river to sea. And, right. uh, you know, the, the 18, 20 inch uh, liter, 5 pound, and that 2-0. And uh, so we rolled out. Chris had a fish probably within the first five minutes. I was like, "Oh, good!" And I watched Joe, who we always we share a spot, one spot we ran out to, and because uh, we were boat number, I think we we're the fourth boat out. Ran out to our spot. Joe was the fifth boat out, so we literally ran to the. We, we usually divide up this spot if we're on the same bank. He caught a fish. We caught a fish. I was like, "Huh." So that's I need to cover water. I don't. I don't think that we, if you just keep scratching this out, you're gonna figure it out. What I guessed was these fish were sitting on absolutely isolated rock. Like, just like if there was twenty to thirty feet, and there was some kind of isolated rock, maybe because it, it held like a little bit different temperature mm -hmm. or structure, but they were just hunkered to it. So he literally goes, "I was in the bush." He felt his was in the bush, like trying to get it out of a stick. And as soon as he popped it out, it went dunk. I was like, there you go. So we did that. Then we went over to a place we call Stanley's Point, as in Vandenberg. And uh, uh, I tried to find some of the grass that was there that you and I saw. It, and he threw out the Carolina rig. Uh -huh. and, what, and what bait and was, was he fishing? He was fishing a brush hog. He always fishes the same brush hog. But the okay. rat part about it was he was really at the end. And you know how it feels like, you know, when your weight hits a rock? Dung, dung. Right. Does that thing? And he stopped, and his rod took off. Burnt, and with four feet of line, out. A two and a half pounder ate it at the boat. Wow. Like he, like he'd been following it up, and uh, so I was like, so he was trying to key in where these fish were at depth wise, and as soon as I, you know, as soon as you start doing that, uh, it was fine. I we ran to uh, uh, Zank's little sunken island. Uh, he missed a fish, uh, and I was still drop shotting and throwing the, you know, the, 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 the little fish he, uh, set up. Um, so what made you go with the haze dong shat on game day? Like, it was, the, the thing was, I kept thinking if these, um, cause the first fish had all of his teeth and was plugged. So he was eating bait they fish. They weren't eating crawdads. Gotcha. And so that was like, hmm, hmm, really? Uh -huh. So I scratch it. So I just thought, if they're, if these fish have, have been able to, you know, stay on a feet and feed, because the water's, you know, it was 60, 59 when we got there, it was 61 when we left. So this, the shed didn't die, die off. There was the, they were eating something, and they had teeth like nobody's business. Every one of them. So did you go with the 4-inch or the 3-inch? Three 3-inch, three absolutely, the tiny one. Hmm. Yep. What size hook did you have in that bad boy, like a number 2? Texas yeah. rigged? Not open yep. hook? Yep. So it was. Uh, I was debating putting the scrounger on, because I saw you had a head in there. I was like, you know, that'd be cool. But I'm literally, the whole thing was making contact with that rock. And uh, as soon as you felt the rock, you're like, ding, ding, can you pull it out? And it would be heavy, and you're like, it would be all, Ugh. you get a safe. But the, the, the first two were classic. Literally, I was at the end of the cast. They ate it almost. Mm. And I was in 30-plus feet of water. And then the when I realized I had slid over a spot making that cast, 
I hit it from the different angle, and I watch, I saw the fingerhead shut up. Because literally that, that spot at nighttime is always good for one or two fish. It's just a it's a bread and butter spot. Yeah. And uh, but everybody's fishing it too shallow. Huh. So putting it on that light Carolina slip shot style rig was key. Yeah, because I did it. I mean, it was uh, twenty five pound G sole to a tiny little barrel swivel to that three eighths. I mean, that three eighths. I was able to launch the bait, but yet keep a really small profile. I think. But as soon as I hit it, I tick 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 tick, and uh, it would. Uh, you'd feel the rock and I'm like, Oh, I'm in it. I'm perfect. I feel like I'm like, I was literally every time I'm like, Oh, I'm in the rock. And Chris was like, Chris watched the whole first one. He goes, I, I saw every bit of that. That was rad. So they eat it. And the first one had it in his, uh, go, you know, in the crusher and the, uh, next four had it, uh, uh, perfectly top lip stuck. Perfect. And then Chris had one short one on the drop shot that he blew his eyeballs out. But, uh, they, they still eat it without the eyeballs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my second fish only had one eye too. I mean, when I was blown out, and he was still, he was, uh, he was on it. So it just, if you look at that bait, it's funny because, uh, oh, the other thing that I honestly think was a contributor, the water wasn't as clear on that side of the lake. Ah. So there was a little bit of off color, and it was the combination. It was off or isolated rock because they were definitely on rock. Because when we got uh, so we exhausted that spot, we ran across the way. We saw one person catch one other fish who actually placed okay. I think he middle of the packed it, and uh, we ran off to. And I was trying to run the pattern of isolated rock off of you know in deeper water, just areas that I knew that there was some structure, and uh, I was able to get one same fish which i don't know if it was an upgrade or not and then uh but uh chris actually screwed up and left a smaller fish in the life well so we threw that uh seventh fish in and got you know, culled out and then our last fish culled up pretty good so it was able to give us and that was just on the face same thing and i had already i set him up with the carolina rig i set him up with the finesse carolina like that and i i'm honestly if, if that's the case and they're eating that, they're going to eat the tiny brush hog. They'll eat the tiny swim bait. They're just keyed in onto that, you know, that profile stuff that's in there that definitely eat that tiny brush hog, I guess, too. Nice. That was fun. Cool, man. Okay. Sounds like you've got yeah. some confidence in that little thing now. <laughs> oh, no, I'm on it now. I just figured out if that's a bite, if they're eating shad and they want it off the bottom... Or if they're eating bluegill and they'll destroy it if it's dragged across any of their territory. Oh, mm-hmm. And, and I'll, I'll probably fish both sides. That, is it four and a quarter? That four and a quarter size. But also, does the spark shad swim as good as the? It's got a it's got a different swim. So I was curious if you actually tried the three inch spark shed, which is in the same that, box. That too. that was my next option was, and I just didn't take the time to sit and figure out the hook uh, situation. Uh, that's all. Yeah. So, but that 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 pearl turns into a translucent purple thing. I yeah. can't even describe how the it's like a UV color. Yeah, it in the is. Water. And it just looks like it's so organic. It just the littlest effort in that tail stuffing. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't tell, did you have all the colors or just uh, like four out of the five or five out of the six? Because there's one color that looked like it was a clear body with like a pepper back. Yeah, it's Morocco. Do you have that? Was that in there too? Yeah, that's the one that uh, was sitting on the scrounger head. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so you fished that way too. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was just rad. Just, uh, but uh, one of them, I missed a fish that I got thumped. Uh, and I was, I forget where I was at. Yeah, impressed. Like, don't, like, oh, jeez. Oh, they're eating it. it. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's nice having both sizes because they'll definitely key in on one size over the other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so. it's, it's nice when they want to eat the bigger one, obviously you know obviously for yeah. obvious reasons but i think i don't think people realize how much they actually feed on that like two to three inch size stuff gorge yeah. you know they, they eat that stuff all day long even these bigger fish sometimes it's it's crazy and maddening so like even that four inch hazedong shad even though it's a you know 
modest size bait is still too big. Yeah. A lot of times. Yeah. And I was also curious about, because I was fishing such light line, because the, that's, you know, what I was doing. I was, um, there's the, definitely was trying to, I was debating, because the weight of the hook, because I was using the hook that you had on yours, I think. Okay. So it was a heavier, a heavier gauge hook. Uh, and I was curious if the hook size, because that heavier wire keeps it keeled so well, well, it doesn't let the bait roll. Yeah, I was just curious if the lighter wire would make it roll. Even though I'd get a little bit better hook penetration with a lighter line. I didn't have uh, none of the fish. And I didn't have a net. I lift every one of the fish with oh, confidence. Wow. Every one of those fish I did, I lift. Yeah, the plastic's so soft and supple. Like your penetration on those, even like sweep sets, like that I like yeah. to do on that rig, are yeah. are pretty much money. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Yeah, hey, doll. Cool, man. I'm stoked that you uh, did well on it. Yeah, that's too funny. <laughs> did, I was like, uh, really? it's such a like small, that, unassuming uh, little bait, you know. And then once you see it in the water like that, and getting dragged, you know, and it's like, oh my goodness, the thing is just kicking away without any effort. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing that I was like, uh, I should probably uh, go get. Uh, there's a, a, you know, comparable was getting taking like a, the same same hook, same rig, and putting a there's a three inch fat. Uh, uh, like a fat Yamamoto impact. or uh, a Cinco. Oh, really? And, and just putting a screw locking a small blade in the ass of it. Oh, right, like the old MJ rig, huh? Yeah, so you just like, you you'd pop it and it'd flutter. And that was the whole thing, I think, because I wasn't just straight dragging it. I was tick 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 tick, so it would literally take off and then flutter down, take off, flutter down. It wasn't just a straight drag where it was plowing. Yeah, I think so that's I, the power of that technique or that rig, right? You can fish it multiple ways. You can either just straight drag slash swim it, or you can kind of pop it like you were the day before, and that yeah. forward momentum kind of just keeps it kind of gliding around. It's on a glide little, bait, yeah, yeah, because it keels with your hook so perfectly. And yeah. the cool thing about it is how the it self-centers your hook uh, when you're rigging it, because all you got to do is split the eyeballs, and you're almost always just a, you're almost perfectly <laughs> centered. Yep. So it has a. I was like, ah, I kind of was impressed with the piece of plastic that I haven't been impressed with plastic in a while. So that yeah, was pretty good. Yeah, so, it's it's uh, amazing to me. It hasn't caught on still, and it's just I think people aren't used to uh, wrapping their minds around presenting a swim bait in that manner. Uh huh. I you mean, know. fuck you guys if you're fishing a a a, a fluke. Oh my goodness, I I can't. Go to go to yeah, take you can choke on that thing for all I care after seeing this <laughs> you, you could just yeah it, it was just like oh Chris I'm like I can't I literally said it like three or four times Chris look at this fucking bait because I, I said I'm going two miles an hour on the trolley motor and it's swimming true yeah it it, it's yeah if you got it rigged straight you know um, it, it stays true okay. yeah no. that's cool man uh huh I mean the build the fact that it worked so well for you in early January on a tough bite when all these guys are blanking. It yeah. sounds like. Did I show you the results? Give me a quick rundown. Uh, you're recording this. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll send it to you by email. Do you yeah. have a. Uh, uh, Don't worry, I'll edit out the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, can I get a, a, a that same drink that you got this morning with the large size 15 with the two extra shots? Yeah, there was 25 guys and, you know, 11 of them didn't have, or 26 guys, and 11 of them didn't have 11. Ouch. And nobody's really swinging for the fences there anymore, right? Everybody's just trying to get uh, a limit. Uh, yeah, you're just scratching. You're just trying to get to the day. It's like, it was the best start we had for, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, January, so I can't look at Nice. Hold on one second. What? Chocolate. You betcha. I'm getting my Starbucks order in. Nice. Are you, uh, are you getting a sandwich? 
uh, just to double down on whatever you're getting. If it's a, you're getting food. Yeah. Is this it right here? Yes. All right, let me call you back. You got it, man. Right. <laughs> so I went up with Dave to go uh, pre-fish a lake for his... Uh, beginning of the season tournament and showed him the haze dong shed in both sizes and one of the ways I like to fish it which is on a slip shot rig which is really just a finesse Carolina rig it's the same rig you guys saw uh, my buddy Manny stick a six pound two ounce smallmouth with but it really came from my childhood growing up when I used to slip shot uh, curly tail grubs mostly hula grubs on occasion, small lizards, anything with some kind of little tail action. And the hazedong shad has really become a staple finesse bait for me in those tough bite situations that you just overheard Dave having to fish in a tournament. And we didn't even get bit on pre-fish. I was just not really mentally there. I was a little disappointed in, watch in seeing the lake after being gone for a while. Um... You know, and I haven't been out for a couple weeks, so I really just wasn't mentally ready to go fish. But, you know, I showed him a couple of these baits and how I rigged them. And he went out there the next day, took my entire box and uh, a couple of uh, other baits. And went out there and they finished uh, in fourth with uh, just, just out of first by, I think, a couple pounds maybe. But just goes to show the power of a small bait when fishing is tough and you kind of overheard him he's talking about 25 boats or 25 guys and uh, what do you say like 11 of them blanked or something and this is really you know a group of some of the best finesse fishermen in southern california on a tough tough winter lake but there it is proof is in the pudding whether you're just in need of a bite or you're competing or just trying to have a good time, man. Uh, this bait has really shined bright for us. And it can for you too. So grab a pack, some light wire offset wide gap hooks, like a number two or even a number four if you can find them. Um, some light slip shot style sinkers or even just a bullet sinker. You know, put it on a 12 or 18 inch leader and either cast it out and drag it, you know, a couple feet at a time. You can actually swim it along the bottom or drop shot this bait. You might be surprised at the results. Catch you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed that sneaky conversation uh, that we had. <laughs> Figure you guys might want to uh, listen in on a real conversation. So catch you guys later.